Hi everyone, today I'll be demonstrating the morphology of the maxillary second molar. So the permanent maxillary second molar, these are the two permanent maxillary second molars. This is the second molar of the right side and this is the second molar of the left side. Basically these second molars, this supplements the maxillary first molars in function. That is basically the grinding function. The crown of this tooth is shorter cervical occlusally as compared to the teeth that is present anterior to this, the second molar. The maxillary second molar, it emerged into the oral cavity at the age of 12 to 13 years and the root completion is around 14 to 16 years. These are the individual models of the maxillary permanent second molars. This is the tooth of the right side and this molar is of the left side. From the buccal aspect, this is the mesiobuccal cusp which is larger in dimensions as compared to the distobuccal cusp. In between the two buccal cusps, there is a buccal developmental groove. Part of the distal surface is visible from the buccal aspect. The mesiobuccal, this root is the mesiobuccal root and this root is the distobuccal root. So both the roots, this root is the mesiobuccal root and this root is the distobuccal root. So both the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal root, they are equal in dimensions. And this is the palatal root. The palatal root is the longest as compared to the two buccal roots. Both the roots, the roots of the stud, they are inclined in a distal direction. You can see the roots are inclined in a distal direction. This is a palatal aspect. This is the mesiopalatal cusp, which is larger in dimensions as compared to the distopalatal cusp, which is smaller in dimension. In between the two palatal cusps, this one is the palatal developmental groove. No cusp of carabilla is associated with the mesiopalatal cusp. So the cusp of carabilla was associated with the maxillary first molar. The distal inclination, you can see all three roots are visible. This is the palatal root. This one is the distobuccal root. And this is the mesiobuccal root. So all three roots are visible from the palatal aspect and you can clearly identify the distal inclination of these three roots from the palatal aspect. So uh, this is the mesial aspect. This one, this cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. This is the mesial marginal ridge and this one is the, this is the mesiopalatal cusp. You cannot see cusp of carabelli on this tooth from the mesial aspect and that was visible on the maxillary permanent first molar. Beside these, the mesiobuccal root, the palatal root and the cervical line is very much similar to that of the maxillary permanent first molar. This is the distal aspect. This is the distobuccal cusp and this cusp is the distal palatal cusp. This ridge is the distal marginal ridge. Because these cusps are smaller, the distobuccal and the distopalatal cusps are smaller as compared to the mesial cusps. Therefore, you can see part of the occlusal surface, part of the buccal surface, and part of the palatal surface from the distal aspect. Buccopalatal dimensions of the distal root is slightly less as compared to the mesial root, therefore you can see some part of the mesial root from the distal aspect. This is the palatal root. This is a cervical line that is comparatively that is straight if you compare it with the cervical line curvature from the mesial aspect. From the occlusal aspect, the buccopalatal width of the crown is more as compared to the mesiodistal width.
mesiopalatal and the mesiobuccal cusps are more well developed as compared to the distrobuccal and the distropalatal cusps which is the smallest one. This is the oblique ridge from the distrobuccal cusp to the mesiopalatal cusp. This is the central fossa. This is the mesial marginal ridge. So the crown is the buccopalatal width of the crown is more on the mesial aspect as compared to the distal aspect. So this is the mesial marginal ridge. Just distal to the mesial marginal ridge, there is a fossa, and this fossa is known as the mesial triangular fossa. Now, this is the distal marginal ridge, and just distal to and just mesial to this distal triangular ridge, there is a triangular fossa that is known as the distal triangular fossa. It's the central developmental groove, and from the central developmental groove, there are other grooves that are originating. One of the main groove is the buccal developmental groove and this groove is the palatal developmental groove. 